Hey there, I'm further reading. You may have heard the saying that the best defense is a good offense. Well, in Dwarf Fortress, the best defense is a whole bunch of cage traps. Let me explain. Cage traps can be built in the traps menu. They require a mechanism to build, and then they require a cage be loaded into them. Glass cages are called terrariums, while other materials will just be normal cages. Once they are put in, if an enemy walks over it, they'll get trapped immediately. You'll see over here, we have a trap troll. Any creature that does not have trap avoidance will get caught in it. And what's really handy is unconscious dwarves will set it off. So sometimes this can actually save a dwarf's life if they get knocked back into it and knocked unconscious. Outside of that, friendlies will never set them off. So you can place them through all of the entrances and exits to your base, forcing enemies to walk through and guaranteeing that those who are vulnerable to it will get caught. But that's just the start. Once you have a bunch of stuff captured in cages, you have to figure out what you're going to do with them. For any non-sentient creature, you can you can tame them. To do that, you go to your citizens menu, you go to others, and look for anything that is in a cage. You'll see here, we've got some drat lands some bug bats and cages, and we can press this button to tame them. I like just doing any trainer. In addition, once they're tamed, if you go to pets livestock, they'll appear here. So you'll see here we've got all these caged bats and mole rats. At this point, we have a choice. Either we can put them in a pasture and continue their training. And for certain animals, we can also war train them. Or you see here, this giant bat has been hunting trained. So you got some cool options for that. Alternatively, you could just slaughter them at this point. And that'll give you a nice supply of meat and leather without any risk at all to your dwarves because they all got trapped in cages. For sentient beings, it's a bit, it's a bit more complicated. We'll see here we have this amphibian woman and sometimes these creatures might have some items on them so first of all you want to you want to strip them first make sure you have a dump zone nearby then we are going to designate the whole tile for dumping then we're going to head to stocks we're going to go to cages and then we are going to go down to whichever one you've designated in this case it was this person and we're going to undesignate so what this is going to do is cage itself will not be dumped but if the creature has any items on them, they will be taken off them and they will be dumped. Once they're stripped, you want to dispose of them. And this can be a little tricky. Let's move over to this empty stockpile because it's a bit easier to explain what's happening here. So this stockpile has been drawn such that every square in the stockpile is next to a hatch. So here we've got these six hatches and every square around them. All these eight squares are next to every single hatch. So I can have 48 cages here next to a hatch. The reason why you set up like this is that in order to pit the enemy, your dwarf has to remove the enemy from the cage, walk them to the pit and throw them in. And it is possible for enemies to escape while they're being led over. So now that they only have to move one square, this helps reduce that possibility there were some other tips on the wiki to reduce the chance of escape but it's hard to tell which of them are accurate and which of them are just people guessing based off of survivor bias so i would recommend that before you ever hit anything through the hatches that you station a military squad nearby when setting the stockpile up you want to go to animals you want to make sure that the empty cages and animal traps are not included and then you want to select which animals to put in if you want you can just do all the animals but this is going to end up bringing in stuff like dratlers and crundles and things like that that you can tame and slaughter so what you can do instead is something like type in men and this is going to be all of the um animal men and we could just do all there you can type in humans type in goblins elves and so on i won't go through every every creature but basically you can limit this only to the specific sentient creatures and then maybe have a different stockpile somewhere else for the creatures that you can tame so now you've set up what's in the stockpile now you have to dispose of them what you want to do is designate a pit or a pond that covers the hatches and press accept and then what you can do is you can hit this button to select animals to be dropped into the pit then you just look through the list to find the prisoners that you want to drop into the hatches. There are a number of um, creative ways to create your pit. For example, below this pit, I've got a pool of magma. For this version, I am dropping stuff into an area of the caverns that is full of very angry amphibian men. 
one design I find quite fun is what I call the Thunder Dome, where all of these guys get drops into this walled off area with fortifications where my archers can shoot through and get some nice Mux Dwarf training going. And then when I am finished, we can just pull this lever and it'll open up a pool of lava blow to get rid of all of the gore and dead bodies note that while like with any activated trap a trap avoidance enemy will not trigger it this is usually stuff like your forgotten beasts your titans big big scary things like that however if the trap has web on it then it will trigger so if you can get yourself some giant cave spiders or a giant recluse spider or even get a web spinning forgotten beast or uh, confined in some way that they can shoot webs onto an area with traps it will allow even trap avoidance creatures to get stuck however even if you do that, any trap avoidance creature that also shoots webs will be immune to getting trapped. So there's still going to be a subset of enemies that this will not do anything for. And you'll either need to block off your entrance so they can't come in or figure out some way to fight them. For that instance, I I've had some success with this approach. You'll see here I've got this grid. Any forgotten beast that shoots webs or emits dust or any kind of mechanic like that. The dust gets put out only left and right and up and down. It does not go in diagonals. So if I've got a beast gets into this area, I can nullify most of its hard mechanics, including the webs. So this makes it a lot easier for me to take out web spinners who I may not be able to trap. And there you have it. This is a guide to base defense that focuses on cage traps. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. Also feel free to comment down below if you have your own defensive strategies that you like to use. If you want more content like this, you can check out any of the videos on screen right now, or you can catch me on Twitch, where I stream Dwarf Fortress pretty regularly. Hopefully, I'll see you soon.